To teach us more on LinkedIn marketing, we have Mr. Dennis Yu, Chief Technology Officer of Blitz Metrics, to enlighten us in LinkedIn marketing. So he is the Chief Technology Officer of Blitz Metrics, the digital marketing company which partners which school with schools to train young adults. His program centered around mentorship, helping students grow their expertise to manage social magazine campaigns for enterprise clients like Gold and State Warriors, Nike and Resort of Stone. He is an international recognized lecturer in Facebook marketing and has spoken in 17 countries spanning five continents including Keynote at L2E, Gold Tank and Marketo Summit. Dennis has been featured in the Wall Street Journal, New York Times, LA Time, National Public Radio, TechCrunch, Fox News, CBS Evening News and is a co-author of Facebook Nation, a text, textbook taught in over 700 college and universities. He is a regular contributor for Adweek Social Times column and has uh, published in Social Media Examiner, Social Media Club, Peak Your Bliss, B2C, Social Fresh and Hio. He held leadership positions at Yahoo and American Airlines and studied finance and economics at Southern Methodist University as well as London School of Economics. He ran collegiate cross country at SMU and has completed in over 20 marathons including a 70 mile ultra marathons. With no other delay, I am calling upon Mr. Dennis Yu to educate us on LinkedIn marketing. Okay, so let's talk about LinkedIn marketing. I have created a presentation and I want to share with you live how to do LinkedIn. I don't think you're going to see other people do this because they're just going to give you PowerPoint slides. LinkedIn, I get more power on LinkedIn than I do on Facebook or Twitter or blogs or anything else. And that's because LinkedIn has almost as many people as Facebook, but it has hardly any competition. We're going to look at what are the successful components of a post, how it lasts differently than other social networks versus blogging, how do you manage connection requests, how do you have a profile that's going to stand out so you get the right people, and then how do you grow your business on this. It could be professionally, it could be because you're an entrepreneur, it could be because you just want to build your, your status, and all the things that I'm doing are things that you can cover as well. I'm going to log in as several LinkedIn connections. As myself, I'm almost 15,000. This screenshot was actually a few months ago. And then as my co-founder, Logan Young, who's presenting in one of the other rooms. And hopefully, I'd love to hear your comments. Give me feedback, or even at the end of this, on which of these tasks, which of these techniques you're using, and maybe even try some of these and let me know how it's working for you. I think you'll find it works really well. There's a lot of simple things that people aren't doing. Number one thing is that you want to reply to people on your posts because when that happens there's notifications up in the top and that sends notifications to to people who are engaging and then when you're the one who replies it also shows you as the author and I found that you can keep a post alive a lot longer so instead of maybe three days you might be able to keep a post alive two weeks so instead of getting reach of let's say 500 you might get reach of 2,000 thousand so you can get a lot more traffic you're not going to get the same thing like if you reply on Twitter or reply on Facebook because the streams are so noisy so simply liking and and commenting back generates more notifications I think eventually LinkedIn will disable this but because there's so little engagement they want to drive other people back so and I think it's just good practice to always reply even you know whether someone says something it's positive or they ask a question or you know maybe they say something hateful you see that on social media it's always good to reply to say thank you right I always like to ask people questions to keep the conversation going when you click on a particular post that you make they'll give you the stats if it's your post and one of the cool hacks is that you can look at what's working on LinkedIn and you can copy that over into Facebook 
So let's say that on a particular post, you can see here that 10 people from Vendasta and seven people from Microsoft so far have looked at this particular post. Well, maybe that gives me an idea of other content that I should create. Because if, if Vendasta, who's a partner of ours, is liking this, I might be able to create more content for them because I know who my audience is. And then I could target people who are fans of Vendasta, either on LinkedIn or on Facebook. I can target people who, are, who have particular interests, right? Here I've got the job titles, 158 people who have the title salesperson. Well, if I know a lot of salespeople, maybe that's my customer. Maybe those are the people who are subscribing to our monthly membership, right? And maybe I thought it was CEOs and founders, but maybe it's actually salespeople. Or maybe based on this particular post, I have salespeople, but another post, I've got people who work at Google, or I have people who maybe their, their, their job is social media specialist or something like that, right? So every one of these posts that you have should have slightly different audiences. And then when you look at on the far right, where they're from, I find that your time of day will make a significant difference. So I've tried posting at six in the morning, Eastern time, or maybe in the evening or on the weekend, and you'll see that this distribution will be slightly different. And because on LinkedIn posts last a lot longer, you may see that this, the, the whole kind of time of day thing doesn't matter as much for you. Organic reach is amazing. I love to copy what other people are doing. The one line sentences, we call that broetry. And it's Silicon Valley people that have started doing this. LinkedIn has kind of cracked down a little bit on this technique, so it's not as powerful as it used to be. But what happens is that you have one line sentences, a series of maybe seven or eight of these sentences. You could do more. And we've seen some of our posts go to two million organic reach just on my profile right here. And now I'm probably getting 5,000. Sometimes I get 100,000. And it, it just really depends. I think one minute videos tend to do quite well now. So we're going to vary it up. Sometimes you have an image with some text. I find that when you have a short intro and then a little bit more information, they have to click the three dots to expand. When you tag other people, be careful about doing that. Maybe tag one or two people if it's actually relevant to them. And you can stimulate a conversation. It's so easy because there's a lot of people consuming and there's not as many people posting. A lot of people see LinkedIn as kind of a job platform and LinkedIn is actually now a marketing platform for B2B, for growing your network, for getting professional news. And that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to get people to understand that LinkedIn, well, Jeff Weiner, their CEO, he was my boss a long time ago. They were saying that LinkedIn is where well, I guess Facebook is where you, I don't believe this, but I think it's funny. They say Facebook is where you waste time and LinkedIn is where you invest time. But I think in terms of like growing your business and you know professional development, LinkedIn is absolutely fantastic. I wish the ads were a little bit better. The ads platform is weak, but try to get what you can organically and it's just fantastic. Maybe in a year from now, it won't be as good. So we should get it now before everyone realizes this. So you can see here that we've got four algorithms. Can you type yes in the comments if you see this? And a lot of people don't know how to use these networks together. So you'll have things like Twitter where it's very frequent and there's news and you know it dies in 15 minutes. And then you have things like Google that last forever. You put a blog post out there, an article, and it ranks and it may be good for years, there's things that I put 20 years ago that are still providing power for us from search engine rankings. And Facebook lasts probably in the middle, maybe a post lasts a day or so. And then LinkedIn lasts in the middle, maybe it'll last like a week. So think about how these different networks work together in terms of how big they are, how much competition there is. LinkedIn has no competition in my opinion. Facebook's got so much competition, but it's a bigger network, right? And in terms of sophistication, you have Facebook and Google is super sophisticated in terms of being able to drive sales, sophisticated ad platforms because they have lots of data, which are the same thing, right? Strong algorithms that because they have a lot of data and a large user base are expensive, but can also drive 
sales because you can optimize to a conversion and Twitter and LinkedIn you can't. So think about, it's not that any one of these is better than the other, it's that you want them to work together. So LinkedIn, because it is kind of like a social network and kind of like a website, you can take advantage of both of these. So because that LinkedIn post may last a week and may keep going, it has blog-like power because it will, you know, you can keep commenting on something back and keep that conversation going. And it's not like Twitter where if you keep commenting on something on Twitter, you're not going to get more engagement. It's already dead. It's dead in 15 minutes, dead in an hour maybe, right? So one of my favorite things to do is I'll take something that is working. I'll post something on Facebook just to test it, something short, because people don't have an attention span. They're scrolling. Facebook told us two days ago, we spent all day with Facebook. They told us that 90% of their traffic is mobile. I didn't think it was that high. I thought it was more like 80, but you know, it's increasing. The average person on Facebook scrolls 300 feet in their news feed on their phone every day. That is crazy, right? So I'll find things that work on Facebook and then I'll copy them over into LinkedIn and maybe I'll modify it a little bit. LinkedIn has some limits on how long that post can be. I want to say it's 1,400 characters. So ironically, on LinkedIn, you can't be quite as long on your regular post. And then, of course, blog posts, Google, this kind of thing, you can have, have it last a lot longer. Maybe I'll have something I posted on LinkedIn and it got a lot of engagement. It drove some sales and leads or drove downloads. Whatever it is your objective is you're trying to drive, you can copy that over into other channels and repurpose it. I think it's fantastic. I don't see a lot of people doing it. I mean, you have something that's working. You know, why not? So we'll look at a few examples. I'm going to click on some of these so you can see it. I've got my co-founder, Logan Young. And I'm logged into his LinkedIn just so you can see. So let's see. Let's I'll click on this ready for anything. And I got multiple browsers open. That's why I like to check how things are working. All right, so this is Logan on I'm logged into Logan, you can see. I'm actually logged into myself. So right now I'm in Chrome. And if I go into Safari, this is I'm logged in as me. So I'm gonna go back and forth between his profile and mine. So I was showing you here. This is one of his posts. My business partner, Dennis, was on the morning news to talk about Facebook and Cambridge Analytica. You can see here we are, right? About to go on TV. And I've got 67 likes and nine comments. And you can see, you know, the other people are commenting. So I'm going, now I'm logged in as, as Logan, so I'm going to click like. You guys are amazing. Okay, so whenever you see someone say something like that, you say, Heather, they actually you want to do the at symbol, so that way they see it for sure. So that's her, Heather, and I could do a backspace so it shows just their first name. Thank you so much. I always want to say thank you. And then when they say something like this, you want to get their permission. So you can say, can I quote you on that? And then a winky face, okay? And then they're going to reply, yes, wow, that's amazing, or, you know, of course you have permission. Let's see what else. We have other people here, right? So 67 likes, 9 comments. I think once you get past a month, they don't show the impressions anymore and the other kinds of stats. But generally, you'll get 1% engagement rate. So if I have 67 likes, I'll probably have 6,700 impressions plus or minus it's not an exact rule right if i go to some of these other posts let's look at some of them like this one this is on my linkedin double your prices that's how you're going to make more money when you you know so i wrote a post right you see these are the one sentence kinds of posts this is five months ago and this got 292 likes you can see that people are commenting. I could even revive it by continuing to comment on some of these other ones. Right. I'm still logged in as Logan, but I'm looking at my profile from Logan's Logan's LinkedIn. Here, let me show you some things. So I'm logged in right now as him. I'll go to I'll go home so you can see what his view looks like. Video is killing it. Look at this. This guy, Manu, he's got 19,000 views on this video he posted 
about one day ago. So just a simple introduction, a short video, and then notice that here, to see the rest of it, I gotta click on see more. Depending on what you have after the second line, people might be curious. So I've helped spearhead some big initiatives on LinkedIn from, I'm like, hmm, I wonder what that is. So I might click see more, so then I can see these kinds of items. So if he's a friend of mine, and I wanna get in on this, because maybe I'm not getting 19,000 views on my video, I could say, Manu, you are killing it on LinkedIn. And you want to, you know, be friendly, so you say my friend. And then he's going to reply or click like on that, right? And there's our buddy Alan. So I'll click like on his stuff, right? Okay, here's Ryan Dice. I'm biased, but I think CEOs, I don't like using hashtags. I know it's starting to work. I don't think LinkedIn's like Twitter, but they're trying to make people use hashtags so their algorithm can get smarter about learning what content is about. I think CEOs will find this episode helpful when it comes to supporting their marketing teams. Let's see who else commented here. All right, so you just want to be a part of the conversation. Ryan. Oops, what's going on here? You are a model CEO. There we go. And you just do this every day for a few minutes, and people will notice you. Of course, don't be, you know, in people's faces or, or irritating. Try to add value. But you'll see a lot of your friends. The more you engage, the more you're going to see better things in your newsfeed. All right, so here I've got 13 network re uh, connection requests. I like to accept most of them as long as they're not, you know, obviously, obviously going to be spammy or if they don't have a profile picture. Normally when there's a few mutual connections, then... I'll accept it. The, the risk is that if you just accept everybody, then you know you'll get spammed with lots of like IT requests and things like that. So I can see like seven mutual requests or friends, you know, thirteen mutual friends. And as long as they seem like reasonably professional, I'll accept them. And it's neat. You can see like here I still have sixteen more, and as I click accept, these connections are going up. And oh, some, uh, sometimes they will leave a message. I always like to, if they have a message, I'm more likely to accept it. Would love to connect. A buddy of mine said, I had to follow you and your work. This guy knows his stuff, he said. All right, cool, I'll accept that, right? And the best way to grow your connections is not to go out there and just start hitting connect, but putting out good content. And when you do, people are going to reach out and want to you know, and want to connect with you here. And then you'll see them here in the messages, the ones that leave messages. So if I come over here, there's this guy, Michael, who I just accepted. And I'll say, you always want to reply, right? This is the whole point of what we're doing here to grow on LinkedIn. Michael, thank you so much. Let me know how I can help. And just make sure you're replying. Here's notifications, right? Remember we said notifications are if people are liking and commenting. So here, some of my posts have gotten 2 million organic reach, 20,000 likes. And I show what are the components of the post. And you'll see that other people are starting to like and comment on this. So when some, someone's saying something good, something positive, you want to click like on that. And you have other people that are going to try to argue. Don't block them or argue. Like here saying, oh, well, if, you're, if you have some of these that are 2 million, how come this one's getting only 1, 300? And, and you want to answer them. And so you'll say this. Uh, you'll say, hi, Rob. Thank you. Not every post will be a home run like that. Plus the algo keeps changing. Broetrin isn't as effective anymore. 
try one minute videos. Okay. And that way you know you're you're participating. Yeah, wow, this has got 12 likes on it. That's good. Thanks for posting. Okay. Won't go on forever. Yeah, that's true. Thank you for sharing. This is the same guy. Was this the same guy who's complaining before? Rob Sands? No, it's a different one. Rod and Rob. See? And then these people here are often going to become connection requests. When you put out good content, you're going to say, oh, I like this guy. I'm going to, you know, click plus on him. And I could see like this guy here. Now we're, we're connections, first degree connections. And I can message him and say, oh, thank you so much for participating, you know, don't don't be all salesish, but you can see who the similar people are. Mutual connections. So you can see people who also viewed. So who are the people that are similar to this? Now I, I know a lot of salespeople. What they'll do is they'll look at a particular person and just try to friend request the other people at the same company or in the same industry. I don't do that. I like to put out content and have other people come in and you know, basically friend request me. That way, I can never get rejected because I never make requests. And uh, this profile, he started out a year ago at, who knows, maybe 200 connections, 300 connections. Now, what is he at? 3,000 something connections, right? So look at this profile. He's almost 3,000 connections. He's got 12 more. If we, another month, maybe, maybe another month and a half, it would be 3,000 connections, right? So let's see. Let's go look at his profile. And you should do these same things with your profile. So he wants to be known for Facebook advertising. So we put a picture of him and Mark Zuckerberg. Because Mark Zuckerberg came up to him and wanted to take a picture, which I thought is funny. Right? When Mark Zuckerberg wants to come up to you, you must be pretty good. And uh, let's see. He even shows for, for you here people who also viewed. So... People who look at Logan, they also like to look at Brian Chesky, who founded Airbnb. Goldie Chan, she's real big on video and LinkedIn. Now you have some well-known people here. Maxwell Finn, Tom Bilyeu, Ashton Kutcher. You probably heard of this guy. He's a famous actor. All right. So this tells you who your similar, similar people are. And he's getting a fair number of people who are viewing his articles. And remember, I'm logged in as, as Logan. I'll show you mine in a second, right? But notice that here his profile is filled out well. It's showing information about him, and then here it's having links. You should put some of these links here. A lot of people are not going to see the show more, but just in case they do, think about what you would say in your profile that would cause people to say, oh, this is the kind of person I want to reach out to for the thing that you do, for implementing ad campaigns and optimizing marketing funnels, okay? Don't just say like you do everything. Don't just say you're here to connect with everybody and you know try to drive more sales or you're really motivated. Like don't say things like that because those are unsubstantiated. If you just try to say you're good at something, that doesn't mean anything, right? You have to have specifics. I manage 60 people. I've spoken at these different places, including, you know, Global Digital Marketing Summit. And then you end with some personality, just like you would in a resume or a cover letter. Oh, I'm from BYU. I graduated there and served a mission. These are the things I believe in. And then you, you have links. So, you know, you click on this to go to his website, right? Other assets you want to have. Below this, you have articles and activity. Click on all activity. You can do this on yours or on other people's profiles. And I don't think articles are quite as powerful as they used to be because you don't get as many stats on them and you don't get as many people engaging. You see here you have, you have articles and posts. So posts are you're just posting on LinkedIn and all activity is when you're clicking, liking, and commenting on other people's stuff. So here, if I look at the posts that he's made, I can see, 
I can often reshare other people's stuff, right? So just this is someone else who shared this vending machine in China. And I just I just shared that post saying this is the future, you know. And you'll get people that will like and comment on that. You see, and now within anything that's within a few days, like this one, three days ago, the smartest investment you can make as an entrepreneur agency owner is in your people. And you can see that there were 24 likes. So usually you multiply that by 100, so 2,400. But the number of views is a little bit less than that. It's actually good because it means if I had 1,800 views, then I would expect about 18, right? You take 1%, I expect about 18 likes, but I got more than that. So this thing will continue to grow. It might grow to, you know, 3,000 or 4,000. So this is a week ago. Remember, we said LinkedIn will last longer than something on Twitter or Facebook. It just keeps growing for maybe a week or so, sometimes longer. So this is a week ago, and this is at 4,500. And you can see these are starting to equalize. So if I had 4,500, 1%, 45, I'm at 49. So whenever this ratio is in your favor, when you get a higher engagement rate, so let's say that if I had 4,500 views and I had, and you know, 1% is 45, but let's say I was at 100, so I was double that, then that means this thing is is going to keep living longer. So I might be, this might grow to, you know, 10,000 or something, but once it's down to about 1% or so or less, then I know that it's probably not as strong. I don't think they're directly looking at this engagement rate of likes relative to reach, but that's generally what I've seen. Your numbers may be a little bit different, but I've done this a few hundred times just to kind of test with what was going on here. Now this is two weeks ago, so they're not showing me as much data as they used to give me. Actually, I think it's like a month. Let's see if I go back a little further. Oh, this has got 5,000, see? 5,000, if I take 1% of this 5,300, 53, so this one, I'm not really getting much more. And you never really know. Some some things you would think would do quite well. Like I think, you know, pictures with simple little things like this will do well, but sometimes they don't. This is only 450 because it didn't get many people liking and commenting. This sort of died. That's okay. You know, sometimes you'll have ones that will be bigger and smaller. This is 4,000. If I scroll far enough, you'll see ones that will have like 100,000 versus just like very little at all. Okay, now I'm going to switch over. Remember, I've been logged in as Logan. This is more indicative of people who are like, see, if I show just my profile on LinkedIn, people are going to say, oh, but he's more connected and I'm not going to get the same kind of reach. I want to show what happens when just anyone, like the techniques I'm showing you, anybody should be able to do. Okay, so now I go to my home on LinkedIn, and this is me. And you'll see this is a post I made an hour ago, is it? Wow. 12 likes. Let's see what else we have here. Brian Panzo, user friends. So I'll click like on that. This is an ad. It says promoted. So you can promote a LinkedIn page. It ends up being really expensive. It's like a $50, $100 CPM, $10 minimum daily budget. You can't do the kind of targeting and optimization that typically would want to have, but that's okay. This guy here I see has been posting a lot of stuff. 16 hours ago, 1,700 views. Yeah, that's okay. Not too bad. Let's see here. Okay, this is Manu. Remember, I was just logged in as Logan because I switched browsers. And I can click like on the comment I just made because <laughs> I'm logged in as both. I'm doing this to test. I'm always trying to test to see what's working on the LinkedIn algorithm. There's our friend Jason Miller. He runs global content marketing at LinkedIn. So very authoritative with LinkedIn because he is the guy, one of the best known guys at LinkedIn. So I'll click like on that and I'll say, good luck on your talk. You'll kill it, I'm sure. Okay. And then he'll like that later and say, oh, thank you so much. Right. So let's see what else. Here, I'll do this. Just to show you how easy it is to write a post. A lot of people, they, they just don't post enough. You should probably post twice a week. Some people say you should post once a day or post multiple times per day. I think that's just too much unless you actually are really good. Like if you're a professional marketer, maybe you could post twice a day. But I think twice a week is good. Anything less than once a week and you kind of fall off. So 
I could say I find that posting twice a week is a good frequency on LinkedIn. This isn't Twitter. So you shouldn't be posting 10 times per day. Hashtags, not a big fan. But I do see, see, just one sentence things. I do see they are getting a bit more traction for my posts, so I use them. Don't like to mass tag other people. Since I think it's spammy. One minute videos. I'm now killing it on LinkedIn. And you can copy over what's been working on Facebook. No alpha penalty. Oops. See, it's trying to auto correct. What's working? Best for you here, my friends. See, literally just typed a thing here, and then it, they're suggesting these tags, so I'll try them. Right. Mm. Video, LinkedIn, algos, sure. And just for fun, <laughs> hashtags is very meta. Okay. See? Post this. Now let's look at my profile. See, here's, here's these two things, see more. So people want to see what else there is. Now let's go to my profile. So I've been on LinkedIn, LinkedIn a little longer than most people. I have a larger network on average. So you'll see that I also have my bio. I'm putting in links to other items and it's showing these pictures. There's a few more people that are viewing my profile and posts that you saw before because I have a, I have a larger network, but the content quality is about the same between what you'll see from Logan and myself. So the, the network size is important, but don't just grow your network with a bunch of random people. I went to the London School of Economics and Southern Methodist University. You can see back here on the activity, right? I've tried articles. I just, I don't think they're as powerful as when you make posts. And you can see, like if you write for another magazine like I write for Adweek you probably want to include those things higher like I also write for Social Media Examiner so I put that here Social Media Club I like to put these items ahead of job things like I'm the chief technology officer at Blitzmetrics but I'd like to find these other items I think these other items are higher authority but it depends on what you want to be known for right so I, I want to be known as an expert in these different areas and if you read Adweek or if you read Social Media Examiner, then certainly that has high authority, right? For people that, that do social media marketing or interested in social media marketing, they know these other journals and that I write for them. Check this out. Here's one of my favorite tips for you guys that are still waiting to the end of this. So here on skills and endorsements, which is not the same as recommendations, I have a ton of these that are at 99 plus. You want to have 50 skills. That's the maximum you can have. Find someone that you like, you want to be like, and you can just copy their skills. But you want to have 50. Most people only have five or six, and then the number of endorsements they have might only be like 10 or something. You want to get your top three to 99 plus, and you can change the order of what the items are. So you can drag them around, right? I can edit this here. So if I click on this one for online marketing, for me, does that not expand? Let's see. There it is. So there's 682 people that have endorsed me for online marketing, which is pretty good, right? It just shows 99 plus. It's just like on your connections, right? Um, on LinkedIn, if you have over 500 connections, it just says 500 plus. So you can get a 501 or you could have 5,000. Who knows? All it says is 500 plus. But you want to get this to 99 plus for the first three. And when you do, when you start endorsing other people, and when they start to endorse you, your stuff is more likely to show up in the newsfeed for that particular kind of content. 
So if I'm talking a lot about online marketing and online advertising and social media marketing, and I've got a lot of endorsements, LinkedIn is taking that into account in their algorithm, right? So I'm choosing what things I want to be known for, Facebook marketing, analytics marketing strategy. I can use those hashtags in my post, and that's who's going to get more exposure. People interested in these same items are more likely to see my stuff in the newsfeed. I can't prove that, but I think that's true. And then here on recommendations, it's, it's kind of like follower versus following. You want to have slightly more received than given. So you don't want to give out 100 recommendations and only have received like five. That would look really bad. So you want to get more you know, on the receive side, go out and give recommendations. Give rec like real recommendations to people that you like that have done good things. And they'll give you ones as well. And you'll see these things and you can take these recommendations and put them on your website, right? It's always nice to have. Makes you feel good too, right? If you do this on LinkedIn, you're going to find your network's going to grow. You're going to find people that you meet in person. You know, they're going to be nice to you. They'll say, oh, I saw you on LinkedIn. It's just going to grow your connections, right? And here in the messages, right? People will say, oh, thank you so much, right? Okay. So I think we've got a couple minutes left. I'm going to finish the rest of this presentation. I don't want to overlap for the next speaker. What is this? Your help will be inspirational for me. Okay. Click the little like symbol on that. Okay. I didn't get through the rest of this deck. We have this whole deck here. All right. We'll just blue, breeze through it. Bro tree. You have the different links. So four parts of a LinkedIn post, right? You get their attention, tell a story, do a lot of these one-liners at the end, have a call to action. What do you think? Or do you do this? Or how do you feel about this, right? Very easy, just simple storytelling. And when you share stories, people are engaging, then they want to see the rest of it. So here's the start. Some random guy wanted to introduce, wanted me to introduce to Mark Zuckerberg, right? And then we talk about what you want to hear, what happens next, of course, right? Do one minute videos. On, on the professional side, which is LinkedIn, do more pictures of you with other people just to show that you're a real person, not just some like business card or some like random person, you know, trying to spam your resume out there. We monetize by selling guides and courses. Have your profile, be professional. Do not do like those wedding photos where you see a hand on someone's shoulder. You can tell they cropped it out of a wedding photo. So here are 10 things. We just covered them. Get more recommendations. Start endorsing other people and recommending them so they can recommend you. Get to that 500 plus connections post once a week or twice a week so there you go if you want to join our group it's teamblitznation.com it's 159 dollars a month and we have support and training lots of courses there you can use the code dennis and get the first month for free is a special thing until midnight tonight we made a code just for you so yeah it's team blitz nation for our group and i think we are out of time yeah Okay, so this is a uh, very informative session, Mr. Dennis. You like we have uh, you have shared many ideas with us. So right now, uh, like this is a question and answer session. So any other participants who have any other questions to do, get it clear with Mr. Dennis. You you can get it uh, post your questions on chat box and then get it clear with him. Okay, I think so. That's your question. So Samuel has a question, uh, Ms. Dennis, Mr. Dennis. Ah, he has a question. Are you certain that pictures and videos will not make impact as compared to text? Here the Samuel ask. You gotta do both. Yeah, so it, it really depends. I mean, sometimes you can see like this, Manu, he's posted a video and it's gotten a lot of traction. But you just have to test it, and there's no exact formula. I mean, we find that the text posts in general do seem to do a little bit better, more consistency. Because I mean, video is more likely to be hit or miss, right? When you have a video that really takes off, you could get hundreds of thousands of views because it could go viral or really interesting. But if you don't get much engagement, then it's tougher. And video is also harder to make. But... I think the future is going to be video. It's just that people don't 
want to make videos as much. I don't like to make videos. You know, forced to make videos. But you know, I, if you think about it, like, what's the best medium to connect with people? It's going to be creating videos. For professional videos, I like to do ones that are a little bit nicer. I'm not one of those people that likes to live stream. Maybe you like to do that, but you know, maybe you like to take selfies. I don't like to do that. There's a bunny photo. There's our bunny, Alan Gannett. See, look, he posted this two days ago, and he's posted a photo. So just post a photo instead of a video, right? And then just a little bit of text. And he's also doing the one-line sentences. See? One line, one line, one line, one line. And here he's promoting his book, but he's doing it in a fun way. He's not saying, oh, buy my book, buy my book, right? Yeah. So Great. he's a Sam so they're going to notice it. Yeah, Samuel has a second question. I will ask again. In terms of time to post, is there any moment that your time on LinkedIn has proven to be the best period for posting, since it may give you more engagements? Now, see, it's not like Facebook or Twitter, so don't worry about when you post. I mean, if you want to, if you maybe it'll make a little bit of difference. If you post like, you know, 10 o'clock local time, 10 a.m. local time and maybe 4 or 5 p.m., right? But it doesn't really matter because when a post lasts for a week, who cares? Just like a, if you want to, imagine you ask like to rank on Google for a particular keyword, what time should you write your blog post? It doesn't matter because these are posts that last for years, right? If something lasts for a week or two, it doesn't matter what time. If something lasts, if on Twitter, it only lasts 15 minutes, then yeah, the time is very important because it's breaking news, right? And on Facebook, yes, it matters. You have these different windows, but if post lasts for a week or two, it doesn't matter what time. Okay, like the participants over here, like you can uh, like post your question so it will be answered in your mail or in your uh, LinkedIn. Uh, based upon your queries, it will be answered for you. So thank you, Mr. Uh, Dennis. Mm -hmm.